Hello and welcome to Think Python Chapter 3, Part 1. I'm going to click this link, thinkpython.com slash nb, to get to this page, which has the notebooks for all of the chapters, and we're going to click here to run Chapter 3 on Colab. First thing we'll do is press Copy to Drive. That way I'll have a copy in my Google Drive, and any changes we make will still be there when we come back. As usual, there's a cell at the beginning here that downloads the thinkpython.py module and the diagram.py module that we saw last time. So I'm going to run that cell. And while that's starting, I'll tell you that this chapter is about functions. And in the previous chapter, we have used some of the functions that are built into Python. In this chapter, we're going to define new functions. So here's the first example we'll see of a function definition. It always begins with DEF, which is short for definition. And the function that we're going to write is called print lyrics. So I write the name of the function, and then these empty parentheses mean that this is a function that is not going to take any arguments. I need a colon at the end of this line. This first line is called the header for this function. The rest of the definition is called the body of the function. And notice that it's indented, and that will be a four-space indentation, which is the standard indentation. Now, this particular function is going to have two print statements. I'm going to have print, the first line of the song. We're going to do the lyrics from a Monty Python song called The Lumberjack Song. It's pretty silly, but if you happen to like Monty Python, you'll enjoy it. And if you don't, you can ignore it. So I'm a lumberjack, and I'm OK. And notice that because I have an apostrophe inside of this string, I'm making sure that I use double quotes to enclose the string. And the second line is, I sleep all night, and I work all day. OK, so that's a complete function definition. When I execute this cell, it creates a new function. But like an assignment statement, it doesn't have any visible output. If we use the name of that function as an expression, we see that it created a function object. And Colab is displaying this function object in a particular format that lets us see what the name of the function is and the first line. So we can see, for example, that this function doesn't take any arguments. And there's a note here that there's no doc string for this function. We'll learn about doc strings later on. Now that we've defined this function, we can call it the same way we call any other function. So I can run print lyrics. And I do need the empty parentheses to indicate that I'm calling the function and providing no arguments. And when I run the function, it runs each of the lines inside the function. And in this case, it outputs those song lyrics. The first function we wrote didn't take any arguments. Now let's see an example of a function that does take arguments. So I'll define a new function that's called print twice. And the argument that it takes is going to be called string. And inside the function, I'm going to print that string once, and then print it again. I'm going to run this cell to define that function. And now I have a function called print twice that takes a single argument, which is a string. And that string here, this name, is called a parameter. So when I call the function, the value that I provide is called an argument. And inside the function, the name that I give to that value is called a parameter. So the name of this parameter is string. When I call the function, I can call print twice. And I'll pass a string, which is Dennis Moore. And this is a reference to another Monty Python song. So now when I call this function, that argument, the string, Dennis Moore, gets assigned to the parameter string. And then inside the function, it gets printed twice. So one way to think about what a function does is it is almost the same as if I create a variable named string 
and I assign to it the argument Dennis Moore and then execute the body of the function which contains these two print statements. So this cell contains a model of what's happening when I run a function. It takes the argument, assigns it to the parameter, and then executes the body of the function. And we can see that the output is the same. In the previous example, I used a string as the argument, but I want to show that we could have assigned that string to a variable and then passed the variable as an argument. So the same string, and then I can call print twice and use that variable as an expression, as an argument that gets passed to the function. Once you create a new function, you can use it inside another function. So to demonstrate this ability, we're going to write a set of functions that work together to print out the lyrics of the spam song, which is yet another Monty Python song. So I'll start with the following function, which takes two parameters. It takes a word and an integer, and it prints the word multiplied by that integer. And you might remember that with string multiplication, that will take that string and repeat it n number of times concatenated together. So I'll use this function to print the first line of the song. I'll assign the string spam with a comma and a space to a variable named spam and then call repeat with that string as the first argument and we'll repeat it four times. So now we have a function called repeat that takes a word and repeats it n times. We're going to use that function to define a new function. The new function is called first two lines because it's going to print the first two lines of the song and it's going to call repeat with spam as the first argument and repeat it four times and then it will repeat spam again four times. And now we can call this function like this, first two lines, and it prints the first two lines of the song. To print the last three lines of the song, we'll define another function that's called def last three lines, and it repeats spam, but this time only twice. And then there's a different line, and then it repeats spam two more times. And the different line in parentheses is lovely, lovely spam, wonderful spam. So we can define that function and then call it like this, last three lines and that prints the last three lines of the song. Finally, we can bring it all together with one function that prints the whole verse. I'll define a function that's called print verse, and when this function is called, it will call first two lines, and then it will call last three lines, and when I call this function print verse, it should print the whole song, which I won't sing for you, but there it is. So there are other ways we could have printed this song. Among other things, we could have just written out the lines as strings and printed the strings. But the point of this example is to demonstrate that you can define a function and then use that function to define new functions and so on. And this is one of the most powerful tools for writing large, complex programs which is to break them up into a set of smaller functions that work together. The next section is about repetition. If we want to print this verse more than once, we can use a for statement. So here's a first example of a for statement. I'll write for i in range 2, and then print i. 
When this for loop runs, the first thing it does is execute range 2, which creates a sequence of numbers, in this case two numbers, starting from 0. So those will have the values 0 and 1. Each time through the loop, it takes a number from that range and assigns it to this variable i, and then prints it. So the first time through the loop, the value of i is 0, and it prints 0. The second time through the loop, the value of i is 1, and it prints 1. So we can use a for loop like this to print two verses of the song. I can write for i in range 2. And each time through, we will print the word verse, followed by the current value of i, and then we'll print a verse from the song. And then I'll have a print statement with no arguments, which will put an empty line between the two verses. So when I run this for loop, we should see verse 0, followed by the first verse, and then verse 1, followed by the second verse. You can put a for loop inside of a function, so we can define a function called print n verses that takes as an argument how many verses do we want to print. It'll run for i in range n, which means that the loop will run n times, and each time through the loop it will print a verse of the song. I'll add a code cell where we can run that. We will print n verses, and let's print three verses. There it is. So let's stop there for now, and in the next part we'll talk about local variables and parameters.